As far as even this this whole transition, it was um, it was something that ultimately each one of us has to be led by God. Mm-hmm. Okay, God, I see all that. You got to make it clear to me that this is the place I got to be. Yeah, and He confirmed it and He made it abundantly clear. And the thing I He told me is that your family needs you. I, at the critical moments, at the points, and I think we all have those moments in our lives where we're going to choose to do this or this, right. to say yes or no. And at that, those moments, she said yes. And truthfully, just the decision to say yes, and yeah. I'm going to do what you called me to do, and I consecrate my life to you, God, I think it just, God's like, okay, you got this, you got that, you yeah. say that, I give you this, and you got my grace. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Winning Conversations. We are continuing the Legacy Series, sitting down with guests, talking about the legacy of Dr. Savelle. Yes. And I have Dan with me. Hello. Say hey. Hello, everyone. We have Preston Savelle. You are the second oldest grandson. Uh, yes. Hello, everyone. The Savelle name. <laughs> it's so good to have you here. Thank you for having me. It's, uh, it's, I'm honored and humbled to be here. So. It's, yes. <laughs> I didn't know who you were until, <laughs> hey. you know, there's some announcements before, and there's so many in the Savelle family. Yeah. yeah. There's like a whole family of us. It's yeah. pretty wild. It's crazy. And honestly, I like that. I like what, I like when people don't know. Who I can I am. say that. It feels that. great. I have yet to meet a Savelle that I don't like. Hey, I've, that's good. The, of the ones that's I've, good. I can honestly say that I've I've met the grandkids and something. Everyone I've met has been incredibly nice. Yeah, you because he's tell one me. of the best. Oh, that's right. now, now that sets a precedent now where if I don't hit that bar, it's going to be very bad. I, right? So far, you're doing great. <laughs> oh, no dude, pressure. You're doing great. No pressure. You're doing great. <laughs> so I'm sure everybody wants to know. You're kind of new here. People want to know who you are, mm. where you came from, all those things, because... Yeah. Kind of new to the church, but so I didn't yeah. know any of that. Yeah, yeah exactly. Well, I'll say is that I mean, of course, this I've been a part of this my whole life, mm-hmm. but in different capacities. And uh, since 2015, I've been out in California. Got my got my wife, Callie. got my baby. I got all these things, but um, it especially what the ministry and the church does here has always been a part and in my mind throughout my whole entire yeah. life. So, and it's something that um especially with everything that's happened now it's it's amazing to see the way god operates and it all comes down to like i think it it comes down to a heart of being open and doing whatever he tells you to do Mm. and it was something to it's a it i would if you talk to me about like four months ago and you asked me if i imagined myself in texas i'd be like no no way (laughs) california is where it's at and, but you can I'll, relate. Can you relate I, to that? Very, <laughs> can you relate very to that? much understand that sentiment. Yeah, <laughs> but I 100 percent like all caps, but God. Yeah, and so and I just hit that. And, <laughs> <laughs> blah, blah. But um, it's one of those things that I'm 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 happy to be here, and uh, it's it's a, it's a full turnaround to a way yeah. of doing what God tells you to do. Well, so. we're so glad that you came back. Yeah, that you're here with the ministry. Mm-hmm. We want to know, kind of. So you. You're a grandson, obviously, but you saw Dr. Savelle in a way that maybe a lot of people haven't seen Mm -hmm. him. You grew up with him kind of as like your father figure. What was that like for you? Yeah, well, I mean, it's something, and I'll say about my grandfather is that for me, he was the best man that I know. And who he was on stage, there was no difference. Mm -hmm. He he was who he was 100%. And so... And despite how often he was busy, how often he was gone, whenever he was with you, he took the time to love on you, yeah. and be there for you. And he gave you whatever he had. Yeah. And that's, I mean, I can think of so many moments and so many po- moments of my life that he was there for me. But he was he was 100%. He's, he's my father figure. He's a mentor. And honestly, he... he was one of the lenses for me on how I view a lot of aspects of life and especially mm-hmm. ministry and it in such a positive way because I, I I believe so much of what he did was in excellence and he, he's the barometer that I judge so many other things yeah. on when especially when it comes to you know interacting and loving and just being there for people he was one of those for me 100 yeah. percent so you can see you can see that too um, you can see the like the humility, I think, is a big word. When I think of Dr. Savelle, yeah. I think of 
humility. Oh, I think of like being personable, mm -hmm. somebody who you can have a conversation with. And I, I love seeing like that Savelle mindset, you know what I mean? Yeah. And you, yeah, you definitely have that also. Oh, that's very nice of you well, to say. You kind of, through this legacy series, you're seeing the consistency of who he was in character. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's not like you got a different version than someone else because you're his grandson. Although mm -hmm. you, hopefully you got a little bit different. Sure. Yeah. You know, <laughs> but there was this genuineness in, like you said, I like the, the word you used was this excellence. Yeah. He had an excellent ministry and he lived his life in excellence. Yeah. And that meant as a family man, as a minister, as a friend, mm -hmm. as all these roles, he did it with excellence mm -hmm. unto the Lord. And I think that's the kind of re resonating legacy that he has. And it's so powerful. And to it see radiates that. on the people yes. that he surrounded himself oh, yeah. with. Like the people that we've had these conversations with, they all like, you can just see that effect on the people around him. Mm -hmm. And that should be the goal, I feel like, the to live your life in such a way that you have a, a positive, this effect on people. Yeah. Even, Absolutely. even to beyond, uh, you know, when you're no longer here. Like, it should be a tangible effect, you yes. know? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Yeah. So I have a question. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask it because it's my, I, it, so, because <laughs> you're here and you're a PK I'm as here. well, right? Mm -hmm. I'm sitting, I'm always sitting with PKs. It's yeah. the craziest oh, thing. Oh yeah, PK you know? club. So preacher's kids. Aren't we the best? <laughs> Fantastic people. We are a complex <laughs> bunch, are aren't we? People. But I always ask this because it was like not growing up as a PK, but someone who grew up in a house of faith. At mm -hmm. some point in time, the faith was just because I was in a house. You know, we yeah. went to church. We kind of did it. At it's some, all you know. Exactly. Is it was the, but then I had to make it my own at some point in time. Mm -hmm. And that's when it changed yeah. mm -hmm. for me. My entire walk and everything changed when it became my own. Mm -hmm. What was that experience like for you? Because, I mean, everywhere you looked, <laughs> you yeah. saw Truthfully. ministry. Yeah. Like, you yeah. saw it everywhere. So at what point in time was it, like, was there a conscious decision? Or, like, what was that like? Well, it's funny because it, especially m me growing up, I felt like it was very much uh, insulated by so much of it, in a good way. Mm -hmm. But um, to have your own experiences and perspective, it's important. You have to You have to find that for yourself. You can't. You can't live off somebody else's faith. You have to yeah. develop it and grow it yourself. And I, I know for me, I think that was really, I had always strived and continued to have a, a, a walk and relationship with God, but I think it became a pedal to the metal whenever I moved to California back in 2015. Mm -hmm. And um, there were, I remember it being, of course, with change, uh, different and possibly potentially scary yeah. new environment new people 100 percent um and i'm thankful for the environment and the people that i was with going to to california but there were so many aspects where okay this is you now uh, this is your this is this is this is the disconnection and it's like this is your path now and yeah. that took 100 percent to be like okay god like what do you have for me and like what do i how can i better serve you in my capacity you know and you know a lot of people because I can, I can relate to that also. I moved away mm -hmm. like you did, but I'd maybe, I well, not maybe. I didn't have the same, like, trust in God. Mm -hmm. Like, you ran towards God. I went the other, you know? Because mm -hmm. with change, with anything, you kind of adapt to the environment that you're in. Yeah. And that's where kind of, like, the difference is. But you went to another ministry, and you started, you know, you ran yeah. towards God. Mm -hmm. And you didn't let, like, that change change you well and it's I, I think it's just one of those things where it's like i i believe people and for me and my experience it helps to have a little bit a bit of a separate separation to be able to come back like even now coming back after all these years there's a fresh appreciation for everything that was built yeah. up and even like books that i'm reading <laughs> things that i'm like oh i was around these all the time but now like okay i need the prayer petition right now. Yeah. I, I need to be able to dive into these and like, cause I have, I have a family, I have a life and I have people who, who need me to be the best, as sharp as I can be, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was one of those things of like, I feel like it was for me, especially it was good to have that, that time to really find yourself and find yeah. what all those things and especially what your own relationship to God means, you know? Mm -hmm. Cause I feel like it also takes the pressure off of you feeling like you have to follow in Footsteps, yeah. you know what I mean? Like you have to do something the same way somebody else did it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's another, I feel like PK thing too, is yes. like you have, you have like the footsteps of your parents or your sure. grandparents and you have to make your own 
yeah. path. Even to. though I mean, we both work for a ministry. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? But we've, but we've. You have to have a revelation of who God is for you, 100%. and then come in and serve your family mm-hmm. in a different way. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I. And that's where like, we have it with other families. You have your father figure, who's a, a, a father figure of significance mm-hmm. and importance, yeah. and the children. That's like wow. That's a big shadow. Yeah. yeah. A big shadow, yeah. and that can be a good shadow that that protects you, or it can mm-hmm. be a bad shadow that buries you. Yeah. you know, and how you take that. But I look at the way that you've described, you know, Doctor Savell again as the role model that he was. Mm-hmm. So when you left and went away, you had this amazing mold of what mm. walking in faith looks like. Yeah. Whether it was the same thing or not, you knew how to be a person of character. For you the were Lord. equipped with the tools, exactly. And I will say to even my my grandparents' credit is that whatever there's so once again that loving aspect is that whatever path you went on and whatever you whatever you did especially maybe even somebody that they liked or not they they didn't voice it in the sense of that because they knew the point of like all of us have to walk our own journeys and come back and then 100 percent if you if you uh you train somebody up right in the way they should go and then they'll follow that path and they'll never leave it when they get older Mm -hmm. you know that's that's the mindset is that if you have faith that you put the the right ingredients in the person then you have to have faith that, that they got to go find their own yeah, their path to come even if it comes back to you you know For sure and it's a lot of that we we talk about you know it's it's what's your confession mm-hmm. what are they speaking over their kids yeah. even when you're not doing That's, the things yeah. that you necessarily yeah. want them to do we all know the power of our words oh 100 yeah. and so to have <laughs> yeah you know i we are products of our parents prayers the power of the words yes yeah. oh. <laughs> Spe- i'm gonna speak life over that situation over that person even though right now i might not agree with all the things happening in that yeah. life yeah. in that person so it, we forget that sometimes mm-hmm. you know you that you have these amazing leaders in faith yeah. and well dr savelle like you had to walk that out a yeah. lot. Like you can see the historical yeah. moments where he's had to really right. big faith moments, yeah, yeah. like multiple big steps. You know exactly. Yeah. And so seeing, I would imagine seeing your grandchild go to California, like a uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, I, uh, I, I almost hundred percent guarantee they had all of those feelings. Yeah. I can tell you yeah. now. <laughs> even when I go to visit there, I'm like, oh uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so there's it's it's a reality, but. The, the trust and faith and what you did there and what's accomplished mm-hmm. there. And then yeah. look, here you are, you know, 10 years later coming back and just what God does is so amazing. Oh yeah, man. God, God is good, right? Isn't God he? is he's good. Pretty, he's God pretty is all good. the time. God, and all, all the time. time. All the time. Oh, he is good. We should yeah. make a t-shirt. Um, <laughs> yeah, so then God. through your experience with your grandfather, you know, what were the big things you took away obviously the character things of that but like of faith like specifically yeah. of faith what was how did that impact your life because i mean again making winner in life his ministry was so laser focused mm-hmm. is that how what was that takeaway for you well i mean i would just come down to for me the big things i saw was and i, I had said it before but it and i'll say it in this way now is that it doesn't matter how smart you are, how strong you are, how capable you are, it all comes down to the heart. Mm. And time and time again, I saw my grandfather's heart. Mm. And if you just start with the heart, you can do anything. Mm. You, if you have a heart that's open toward God, you, t- you can do whatever he tells you to yeah. do. But it just starts with that heart. And I saw, hey, there's just so much. It's like a whole encyclopedia. Yeah. <laughs> And, but those aspects of faith, but there, I think it, another part of it comes down to really his, his heart to serve, man. Like, I, I think a big one I saw, even just how he interacted with, like, his mentor or his person, like, uh, Brother Kenneth Copeland. And whenever Kenneth Copeland needed him, Jerry Savelle was there. Yeah. In mm-hmm. any capacity. Like, he was 100% loyal to and aware of and he valued the, the things that brought him to the place that mm-hmm. he was. And it's that cherishing and that's and it's that honoring. And it's just that led him to be able to do the next step. You know, mm-hmm. people see what this is now. But when when the ministry started, <laughs> where that property was, it was just their house at first. Yeah. You know, and yeah. then it eventually built to a building here. And then eventually the, to a point now where that's what became the, that's the executive building. Now. Yeah. But it started with baby steps and it started with, I mean, 
putting your faith on something even this high, you know, believe, even if it's believing for gas money, believing for groceries. Yeah. You heard, you all heard the stories about yeah. how, it, and it's it started there, and it, it doesn't matter how big or small it is, but it's just the point of starting, I'm going to have faith, even yeah. to this capacity, even for this something this small, it, it, and it just grows from there. And I'm sure know? having, like, a front seat to all these things only grew your faith hundred percent stronger. I mean, I, I, I think it's awesome. And I think I, I, I believe I'm in the mindset of where, especially parents and children and families, it's like, I believe you, you, you build a foundation for somebody to where I'm, I'm thankful. I didn't, I hadn't have to, I'm already at a certain capacity because of the life and right. example that they left for me, you know? Now, of course you have to learn and have your own experiences and grow in some things, but that foundation, yeah. it just gives you so much, so much, Oh, you're, you're like on a, yeah. you know, but you can use or abuse that 100%. foundation also mm -hmm. because it could go, you know, you just take it for granted. I think yeah. it just assume it's going to be there. Yes. And yeah. Add, yeah. you don't have to add to it. I think, it w I mean, Dr. Savelle's talked about it so many times in his preaching about building the foundation. Like, yeah. You have to get that foundation right because it's going to be everything on it. Right. And if you don't have a strong foundation, I mean, like, you know, mm -hmm. what's the, 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 the final phrase of the beatitude? Like if a person who builds his house on a rock, mm -hmm. when the storms come, because the storms are promised, if that's going to happen, mm -hmm. is that what you build your foundation on is going to last. Mm -hmm. And you just, it's it's crazy because we always look at Dr. Savelle as like a 55-year overnight success. You know, like some <laughs> yeah. of us, like, oh, yeah. it just, just right overnight. Yeah. He, he nailed yeah. it. Like, <laughs> just that quick little, and you just don't see all those really personal moments of yeah. vulnerability. The right. really personal moments of like, man, I've got to go do ministry, but I can't take care of my family yeah. who's got to eat. Or I don't feel like it. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. And like that, but that trust and that faith, of like, well, I, if I know I'm doing this, then I know he'll do this. Yeah. And that those are huge, huge things that we just see now the fruit of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just like, oh, well, that's got to be that. For, no, like there are so many decisions. Yeah. Faith that had to be made that were just that. I, it's weird coming into it late into his ministry. Like I've said before, like, I don't think I truly appreciated who he was mm -hmm. in terms of the scope. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just really yeah. hard to receive all that. Of course. It's, and you're yeah. like, oh my gosh. And now when he, and especially the, you know, obviously we came here for Pastor Justin and everything yeah. else, but yeah. like the more and more I learn and have these conversations and you hear people talk about him, the more and more I am just so thankful that this is where we're at. Yeah. Mm. And it I, makes me happy. I, yeah. I really appreciate like when we talk about like the pastor, the preacher, and they're, they are just people. Like mm -hmm. these are just people mm -hmm. with real world yeah. problems with, they go home and they, you know, Say, the same <laughs> as all of us, right? Yes. But I've loved hearing about how, like, who he was as a grandfather or who mm -hmm. he was as a father. And I want to know, like, for you, what characteristics of, like, him being a father do you – because you're kind of a new dad. Oh, yeah. Your baby's almost one. It's, she's practically – she's approaching her first birthday, <laughs> and I'm like, where does the time I go? I know. It's wild. You used to be this it big. Is and wild. Trust just, that. I, it's wild. It's wild. It's wild, okay? both of you. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to know what characteristics of like him personally, not just the faith stuff, because we we yes. know that, yeah. but of him personally that you've kind of taken on. Well, I mean, I'll say for myself is that um, there's so many moments and memories to like, like I said, it's like a, it's like your whole entire <laughs> life. Yeah, it's yeah, really. Um, but there were like I can think of so many great moments for my grandfather. Like he he taught me how to drive. He was one of the first people that really like when I got my permit, and he and he was so patient with me. He was <laughs> he, he this man was beyond patient. Like um, I remember I was home, and I was uh, this was uh, during uh, high school, and I had this like algebra homework, and I'm just like I, I I'm not a math person. I'm not a math person. Me neither. I'm a literature, grammar. Yeah. All that, I let, that's uh, history. That was all my bread and butter. And, but I was sitting at the table, and I was like, what is this? Like, <laughs> what is this what even? What is this? <laughs> and so I was sitting there, and my, and my uh, it's funny because my, my, my grandfather's uh, office is, he is uh, on the other side of the house there. And so, but I could hear him coming every time because he'd have his slippers on, and I'd hear, S -s 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 <laughs> walking toward me. And especially uh, my, when my brother and I were staying at the house there, for those few years, I remember if we'd ever get into any discussion at all, it would always sound like we're fighting just because we get animated, you know, when yeah. you talk. And so I hear my grandma say, Jay, the boys are fighting. <laughs> and then I would hear, I would hear those same slippers go. <laughs> and he goes, 
Boys, quit that fight. <laughs> That's so we're not fighting. We're having discussion. We're, we're just talking discussion. over each other. We're excited in this yeah. conversation. And so I remember I heard him come over. Uh, those, those slippers coming by me again. And I was sitting there looking at this homework. He goes, oh, you're trying to figure this out? I'm like, yeah. And so he sat down and he was looking at it with me. And we were just both quietly looking at it. And he's like, I have no idea how to do this. <laughs> and so I was like, well, me either. And he goes, but I'm going to figure it out. And so like a week or two comes by and of course you get through some of those assignments and then another one comes up. And this man had taken the time in his schedule to go back to algebra Stop. and look it up to be able to come back and help me figure That's it out. That's amazing. What? And so like, that would not have been me. <laughs> oh my not and so he came back to me and then the next time we had that, he's like, oh yeah, we do this. And I'm like, Oh, that is that amazing. Makes that sense. Is awesome. And so that's just the type of level of like the time, despite what yeah. he was doing, despite yeah, sure. everything on his plate to be like, yeah, I'm yeah. here for you. You know, that is awesome. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. Whenever he was gone, he was 100 percent on, you know, preaching churches. But when he's home, he's 100 percent. Yeah. Home. He's very much family. He loves yeah. all aspects of his family. And even even now during this this process and transition, mm -hmm. I've, we're still this, I've been finding like pictures I drew for him. I've, I've been finding so cool. things I made for him. And I'm like, and finding things I don't even remember until I see my signature on, I'm like, what did I make? So, and why did you keep this? <laughs> I, I know, That's so it's great. special. That's really so yeah. in this, the, the trend coming back and, mm -hmm. and, and kind of like, how is that now for Miss Carolyn? And like, yeah. just kind of in that role now, is it just being a grandson there? You are, no. I'll say as far as even this, this whole transition, it was, um, it was something that ultimately each one of us has to be led by God. Mm -hmm. And when everything had happened as it has, and, um, uh, there, I saw coming back here, I saw the need and I saw the situation and then I saw my, my grandmother as well. And I, I know for myself, I was like, Okay, God, I see all that, but you got to make it clear to me that this is the place I got to be. Yeah. And he confirmed it and he made it abundantly clear. And the thing I he told me is that your family needs you. Mm. And so I was like, and whatever capacity that is, that wasn't even a capacity to work at the ministry or anything. I was just yeah. like, you know what? God, you told me my family needs me, so I'm going to be here. Yeah. And so being there with my grandmother, it was, it's so amazing because right now she is despite everything she is the strongest and the most like on fire and happiest i've seen her f honestly forever yeah and the truth is because i believe at the critical moment at the point where she and she's told me this is that she's consecrated to herself to god and what he's telling her to do mm -hmm. just like she my grandfather has a path and she has a path but that's her path that god's given her you know yeah mm -hmm. and I, at the critical moments at the points, and I think we all have those moments in our lives where we're going to choose to do this or this, right. to say yes or no. And at that, those moments, she said yes. And truthfully, I've seen, it's just, I've seen so many awesome, there's a strength in her. I'm like, people in your position wouldn't be, would, people don't even go to, it wouldn't even be at a church if it'd yeah. be five months, six yeah. months, you know, mm -hmm. and especially how connected she was. But it's like, just the, decision to say yes and i'm yeah. going to do what you called me to do and i consecrate my life to you god i think it just god's like okay you got this you got that you yeah. say that i give you this and awesome. you got my grace well you've done the same thing with your family also yeah. being here to support her and support your family mm -hmm. and taking your wife and daughter out of a place that they were familiar with that your wife had to be you know, yeah. she had to hear from God also. She 100%. had to hear that this is the place that y'all are supposed to be also. Oh, yeah. And so y'all have done the same thing. Yeah. You know, just submitting to God all the way. This is, I trust you. This is the place. And he's shown you, I mean, now you get to work at the ministry yeah. that your grandfather Man. started. Oh, like, wild. that's a full like, circle <laughs> moment, right? That's a big deal. I, I cannot even, I, I, I said it before, but again, like, if you had asked me four five months ago, if you asked me if I had expected to be where I am right now, I would say no yeah. way. And I was, and to be honest, I was perfectly content in the path that I was either partially had created for myself, yeah. you know, but whatever, but God. Yeah. Yes. And when yeah. God comes into the equation and then whenever you have a, a full heart of saying, 
it's so easy. People say like, oh yeah, I'll, whatever you want me to do, God, I'll do it. Say it, but what if, like Proverbs 3, 6, acknowledge God in all your ways and he should direct your path. But that's just a verse people read. But when you actually like take that in to be like, oh, do I acknowledge God in all of my yeah. ways and my finances and what I want to do for my life? And it's when you get the, it turned to that, it's like, that's when the power comes on. Mm-hmm. That's when the juice starts flowing. That's when yeah. real. And so I, I saw that for myself coming back. And I saw, I remember um, when we had the memorial and everything else, there wasn't, originally we weren't going to say things. Was, uh, uh, there, there was so many people talking, but the grandkids weren't going to say anything. And so I was like, you know, and that they asked me, oh, we might say something and you could just talk for us all. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I was kind of like, you know, there's so many people speaking and then, Two nights before, I like I could not go to bed. It was like four thirty a.m. and it was just burning in me. And I'm mm-hmm. like, if there's if there's anybody who deserves to have something said about them, it's my grandfather. Yeah. And so I was up that night and I wrote out what I was gonna say. And then that's where everything else came afterwards. Of there was just like an opening of my eyes of just like God showed me a path. And then even though it was just the next step, and it was it was Him just saying, "Your family needs you. Yeah. And your family needs you, and you need to be here for them." And that was in every capacity. So I, and that was just, that was the step of faith. I'm like, I didn't, I didn't think to work at the ministry. Yeah. I was looking at, I was just one step I, at a I time. was looking at jobs. I was looking at apartments. I yeah. was looking at all these things and I'm like, but I'm just going to do what you told me to do, God. Yeah. And, and he confirmed it so clearly, even within my wife, even with everything else, like the way he just make things clear in other people too. It's, a, it, 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 when you see things, you're like, man, that's only God. Yeah. It has to be yeah, God. It has you know? to be. That's great. Yeah. I kind of want to know now, like, so you're, you're here and it's a bigger question, but how do you see the future mm. of Jerry Cell ministry? Like, where do you see the, 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 the yeah. path forward? Well, I'll say for this is that from, for myself and especially coming in as a, uh, well, I guess my role would be office coordinator at JSMI. <laughs> um, but We've com- talked about roles on this. Yeah, part. Yeah. Us at that work for the ministry or work for the church. We don't technically have roles. I know. <laughs> I know. If you wanted to have a name for my role, that's what it office would be. coordinator, but it's, I've been everywhere, yeah. anywhere in the short time I've been here. Yeah. But, um, I, I'm really, it's amazing the place that God has put everybody into where they're supposed to be. Like yeah. right now, like, like Eric and Nikki Deaton the best people. I awesome. love them. And they them being here with us at, at the ministry and serve and be, it's just invaluable. Like, yeah. uh, and so I know for myself going forward, my priorities are a serving the will of God. That's the priority mm-hmm. for me, hundred percent. And then B protecting our grandfather's legacy, ensuring that it has a continuing lasting impact because yeah. it does. And his work that what he spoke on and what he taught on has has an effect way past his time yeah. here on earth. Yes. And then um, number three for me is ensuring, uh, helping my grandmother in any way she can to achieve what God called her to do in regards yeah. to the ministries. Because she has so much in her. Mm-hmm. And she has she has a wealth of it. And I, I've heard so much of it. And she's she's doing podcasts now with the, she's I doing know, stuff. Yeah. I know, she's doing all the. Uh, I love that for her. She's speaking, she's doing the TV show. Yes. With it. So, uh, and then there's so much, it's like a nut that you're cracking and you're getting everything out of yes. there. That's, I'm, I'm, I'm ensuring that everything that's in her is being able to be shared in that that's capacity. Awesome. So that's, those are my priorities. Yeah. And I believe like we just have that for me, have that road in mind and then God will make each and every step clear. It's amazing. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. You want to, you want the honors? Do you want to? You got it. So making winners in life is our vision yes. at Heritage. Yes. Um, and we ask everybody on the podcast what that means to them. Yeah. So, Preston, what does making winners in life mean to you? <laughs> Andy, uh, you know what? I, 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 I had to come because I've heard this question a couple mm-hmm. times throughout some of the podcasts. Yeah. I knew this was a unifying thing. So I'm like, and it's something I definitely wanted to like think on and chew on. So I, I have to, but I, I don't, I wow. want to make sure I get it right. <laughs> this is the first. Uh, I thought you were going to take your hat off for this. No, I'll tell you. Let's, 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 let's pop the brakes. Uh, uh, <laughs> so I'll say for me, it's say, uh, and this is just, I was thinking about at home, achieving the call of God so profoundly in your own life that it has an active and tangible effect on those around you. 
That's, that's good. Uh, that's, uh, that's really that's good. Really <laughs> making winners in life. That's really good. Um, and you know, and the uh, the basis. And once again, I have this guy out because there's. I just respond. It just came out of me when I knew it, and I had to write it down. Otherwise, it would be like. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. We know something about. But that. Uh, in Psalms <laughs> twenty three, it talks about my cup runneth over. Mm -hmm. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Mm. And I think, I think. That all of us are, you know, containers. We're all yeah. cups. And some people are full. Some people are empty. And some people are full of <laughs> not good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> full of it. You yeah, know? full of it. And then, some people are, yeah. and then some people are, you know, full of what God has for them. And I believe that's 100% of, like, when you're actively walking and doing of what God tells you to do. And mm -hmm. you are have that heart open to him. You're that open cup. And you're getting poured into. And when you fill up a cup to the capacity where if I filled this cup up right now with water and I kept filling it up, it's going <laughs> to, we're going to see an immediate yeah. effect and it's affecting the environment that it's in. And That's I believe good. that you just living your life the way God has called you to live, it's going to have a tangible effect on people. People are going to see it on you. People are going to notice it just as you're living life day and day. Um, I remember when I was working in uh, California for a period of time, did some acting, voice acting, a variety of those things. And I remember I'd go on, on sets. And it's funny because you, when you, you know, you check, you check in and sign in at 5 a.m. or yeah. something like that. And you're at, at when you by the time you get where you're going, you're sitting there. Most of the time you just want to be left alone. Yeah. <laughs> and most of the time when you see somebody else with book headphones on different that you know that's the sign of like oh yeah they're probably mining. And that's yeah. just a general like they're probably minding their own business. Mm -hmm. They're enjoying themselves. And so many times I would be in that mode and people would just like come up to me and I'd be like, and then I'd feel my, my flesh self would be like, I want to uh. be alone. What do you want? <laughs> but then I would be like, I would, it would happen and it would happen continually. And I would be like, this is, and I'm like, why is this happening? And it's like, because people see things in you oh. and people, people are looking for, we had talked about this before, but especially in California, but in throughout the world, there are people who don't have secure, yep. don't have yeah. a foundation, don't yep. have, who are completely vulnerable. And just like that open cup, they're open to whatever the world gives them. Yep. Yeah. And they're looking for just like, a, I mean, and God's the only real thing. Yep. He's right. the only real genuine, he's the genuine article. He's the one that gives us life and he's the only one who can fill our cups and then we're happy and we're mm -hmm. enjoying our lives. And so when people see that aspect on you, it's like yep. they want it, you yeah. know, and it's like all of us and it's not all just preaching on a stage, no. but it's, it's your day to day life yep. and how you interact with the people you're at. And it should, you should be when you're pouring into others, it's, it's, it's the good godly things yes. that get to them to the point where they're overflowing yep. too, you know? So that is my answer. That is Perfect. Very that was good. Perfect. It was very good. I was loved good. that. As first yeah. I brought a phone out, I was saying it's like we're actually gonna get like you know. Get into I know. It. I'm no, sorry. Was no, no, don't I knew there was procedure, and I'm no. like, but I'm like, I How need this. Dare you. That was perfect. Uh, that was great. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This has been super fun, Preston. I am so happy that you. It's were already today. over. I know. <laughs> I was like, oh, I have things time, I need to say. Time flies. Okay. Time flies. Time flies. flies. <laughs> it is a great time, and these are so fun. And thank you so much. And hopefully, you will have an opportunity to come back. We will have you again. I have more things to say. I love it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm cutting you off. No, uh, okay. There is a can of worms. Yeah. That is we'll get there. We'll get there. We will. This was so fun. Again, thank you so much. We're so happy that you're 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 back here. Yeah. In Texas, yeah. we appreciate you being here, and we are so excited for the future of JSMI. And yeah. then, just being a part of this legacy series, you've given us such an amazing story. I love that story of the slippers. I'm gonna be thinking about that. Oh my all gosh, time for now. real, yeah. I'm gonna be thinking about it all Always the time. Always quit now. that fight. Yeah. Start reading about that. algebra. Um, <laughs> so yes, yeah, thank you. This is amazing, and and thank you all so much for for listening. Thank you for being here and enjoying the legacy series. There are more of these to come that are coming down the road. So please, uh, every Friday we read these seas on Apple, Spotify, YouTube, you name it. Anywhere you want to see this, you can see it. This is an amazing show. We are so happy you're here. And we will see you on the next one. Bye. <laughs>